More breaking news for you guys is that West Ham have apparently accepted a £12 million plus £6 million in bonus structure payments offer from newly promoted West Bromwich Albion for West Ham winger Grady Diangana. The 22-year-old winger is back at West Ham obviously after spending a very successful season in the Championship with West Bromwich Albion. Now, Bilic has come back into the market and is going to try and bring in his one of his really important, versatile players in the midfield that played such an important part for West Brom and take this young talent away from West Ham. Now, should he be able to take this young talent away from West Ham? And in my opinion, absolutely not. It's £12 million plus £6 million add-ons worth the fee? Absolutely not. We know West Ham don't have the money. But what we do have here is a young, versatile talent. He has everything going for him um, in, 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 in the position that he plays in. He's got a great, does a great job in moving the ball forward. He gets himself into dangerous positions and he can still be part of link-up play. He plays high-quality shots, shooting always at the, at the, the keeper. Um, and, and, and do you know what? The interesting stat is he averages 11% of those chances in scoring the goals. And he's at the heart of most of the things that went well for West Brom last season. While he was on the field, he was involved in 61% of the moves that led to goals. But he also chipped in with eight goals and six assists in only 30 games. Now, when I say only, 30 games is not the max amount of games you can play when you're in the championship. So if he had played more, unfortunately, due to a few injuries, he could have chipped in with a lot more goals. So now you understand why clubs like West Brom and other clubs are potentially sniffing around this talent. You know, West Ham were linked to bringing in Etsy from QPR, who, of course, signed for Crystal Palace. And the fans went that shit crazy when they realised we weren't going to sign him because he then moved to Crystal Palace and apparently he was West Ham's number one target. But the justification for West Ham potentially not signing him was the fact that we had Grady Diangana in the ranks. Now, he's come back from his loan and he has apparently asked for assurances that he'll be involved in the, the first team setup. And maybe he hasn't been given the answer that he is looking for. Now, I don't know how Many players can ask for assurances unless you are playing to the highest level, to the highest ability, the highest league in the world. But even at that, can you really ask for assurances? Now, we don't know. That is rumours, but that's what we're being told. Now, what does it mean? It means that we've got a player who's come back, who's played in a couple of friendlies for West Ham since his return. And he performed really well. He got three assists for Sebastian Haller against Ipswich. And again, in the Brentford game, he never really performed to the highest level. But um, you saw little glimpses of, of what he can offer. Sometimes there's unpredictability in the game because he's such a clever footballer. He's up for trying new things. And that's something we need to do in the West Ham midfield, especially on the left wing, is ha be slightly innovative. And that's something we lack. We absolutely lack with abundance. So you think to yourself, what? Is the purpose of selling Grady D in Ghana? Is it because West Ham have another couple of players lined up, a player lined up? Do they see that position as not a priority moving into the season when we all complain as West Ham fans that defence is the problem and attack is the problem? We all, as West Ham fans, state that the midfield is our most packed out area. So, you know, do we question the fact that potentially Moyes or the board will accept this fee for the in Ghana? It's just food for thought to think about, start digressing why they maybe would accept this fee when for, yes, okay, albeit for a young talent, um, would offer West Ham another opportunity to bring in players considering we have no money. So the in Ghana becomes West Ham's asset and he potentially could bring in £18 million that West Ham could invest elsewhere and definitely in much needed positions. Albeit though, I do think there are other players I would rather West Ham to sell than to grade a because I think this would have been a really good season to see Diangana. Now the confusion in messages coming from West Ham is as follows, you know, We've seen Josh Cullen make the step up a few times to the club and and and, and especially in pre-season. And now he's gone out on loan to Charlton back and forth and they love him, absolutely love him. He can perform to the highest level, but he's come back to West Ham and you can't help but feel like it's his make or break season for Cullen. So, like I said, if this rumour is true, it means that West Ham will have to be in the market to potentially bring in another player. And the other player I can't help but think will be Ben Rama. If West Ham are going to go for a like and like for like and are looking at that position and thinking, 
okay, what 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 can these players bring? You've got two players, another player that played in the championship. You start to relate Ben Rama and Ezes and Dean Gannis stats against each other. So you've got Ben Rama who scored the goals and assists that he did for a Brentford side that were the second highest goal scorers in the championship. You know, he outscored Dean Gana, he out assisted Dean Gana and was equally as important to the Brentford side that, yeah, okay, they didn't get promoted, but nearly did get promoted. So let me ask you this question. If West Ham sold Dean Gana for 12 million plus 6 million pound in bonus structures and brought in Ben Rama for roughly the same value, do you see the point in that or do you think that's a good move or not? Get your comments in and let me know your thoughts on it. But for me personally, if West Ham are going to be selling Dean Gannon, I can't help but think that they're pushing forward with a move for another potential player, another potential winger who can be a trickster and who has performed to the highest level over the last two seasons. And I think that player could be Ben Rama, but we'll have to wait and see um, and, and see how that pans out. Really, Dean Gannon did play some games for West Ham in the Premier League and didn't look out of his depth when he did play. But of course, West Ham took the option to send him out on loan to West Brom for last season. And it worked out wonders for him. You know, he's played at, you could questionably say the highest, well, sorry, the highest level at the championship and literally finishing only, what, four or five positions below West Ham if you compare the Premier League and the championship. So for me, um, I, 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 I'm a bit baffled at the potential decision to sell Dean Gana, especially the youth prospect. I can see why fans would have a little bit of uproar. But if you had to be the devil's advocate to it, you know, we constantly go on about the, um, the areas for improvement in the West Ham squad. And we don't ever talk about the midfield massively, specifically since we've signed Socek. But what is it that's going on in the background? Why are we looking at selling a potential asset for the potential money that's been touted when we could be looking at other players that maybe have overstayed their welcome at West Ham. Get your comments in below and let me know your thoughts on the potential loss of Grady Diangana and we'll uh, respond to them in the comments. Again, subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up. My name's been Anton, this is Iron United. Come on, you irons.